Hi, you guys. This is your girl, Civil Disobedience, bringing you episode two of Surviving R. Kelly, season two. So we get into the second uh, episode, and they begin with the girl whose name is Tiffany, who reported R. Kelly years prior to all of this happening, um, prior to the videotape that got him prosecuted and indicted. And she was basically sharing how she was unprotected as a child. Her mother didn't really care. And this is important because what you have to understand is if parents do not inform the police, if parents do not inform social services, it leaves the child open to this type of abuse. So I just want to share with you all a sound bite from what she said. So Tiffany continues to share how her experience with R. Kelly went from one that seemed like a fraternal love to a romantic love to she started singing background for Aaliyah. So he was not only involved with Aaliyah, but this Tiffany young girl also. We also have to remember that these are allegations that have not held up in court and a lot of the victims have already been paid out as you can see Aaliyah is key to everything my understanding of what happened between Robert and Aaliyah Dana Houghton begins with Barry Hagerson who was the manager who oversaw Kelly's rise to superstar he had a niece Aaliyah Dana Houghton and Hankerson paired Aaliyah with Kelly, and Kelly wrote, recorded, produced, and titled Aaliyah's debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. We became really... So we can conclude that Aaliyah's parents, Tiffany's parents, were basically allowing them to go on in this elaborate specific relationship with this grown man and the thing that i don't like about the documentary it gears towards trying to make people feel bad for asking questions well why did you lie about your age they did this little segment where all the questions that would run through your mind are playing while the women are just sitting there looking into the camera they also tried to make us feel bad for saying that the parents are to blame also. But you guys, I'm sorry. I feel like if your child is out to a certain time and you're allowing them to party with grown people, you are to blame. So let's hear this segment from one of the other backup singers that was friends with Tiffany. You don't even see it. If you're in the studio and you hear the music going and the door is locked, Here's the thing, you're accustomed to that because this is how he creates. You're not thinking that there's something going on on the other side of the door because if he wants to do something, he does it in your face. So it's very easy for me or anyone else to not realize what was going on with her at that time. It's never something that I wanted to do because I was not sexually attracted to Robert. 
Now, the young lady that's speaking and saying it's easy to not know what was happening to her friend is also the young lady who says that she walked in on R. Kelly having sex with Aaliyah. And this is where the inconsistencies in the docuseries where I was saying earlier, yes, it's credible. They did have a relationship with him, but the relationship, it does not necessarily mean that criminal charges will stick with it leave me your thoughts and opinions below this is civil peace